Hey, Be The Nation. Hey. What's, What's going up? on? How are you doing? Let me say hello to Charlotte Correctional in Florida, Chicken Little. Okay. And Whoa. Walla Walla. Okay. Um, Vince Swanson in Salt Lake, Utah. Like, how could I not say Chicken Little? Right. <laughs> I mean, what a great name. Yeah. Chicken yeah. Little. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. Come Did on. anybody ever read that book? Yes, of when course. When you were little? Yeah. Well, some of us older people. Washington Cor- County Correctional, uh, Travis County Jail in Austin. Okay. Um, I was wondering, maybe I should tell my Troy Aikman story. You should. How about that? Why not? I mean, you, you've Just already said it. You can't leave you know, hanging. Travis County Jail, I went um, to Austin. I was like uh, 26 years old and I was already in ministry. I went to a church and I had some open days. So I was like, um, I want to go to this, you know, jail or whatever prison. And and so I called the pastor and I said, have you ever been, you know, to minister in the jail here? And he was like, oh, sister, I've been trying to get in for two years. It's a bunch of red tape. Like, there's no way you can get in. You might as well forget it. And um, I was like, okay. So I started hanging up the phone. And, and as I did that, I clearly heard God say, is he your source or am I? Come on. And I was like, okay. So I said, what do I do, God? And he's like, call. So I call. And I talked to the assistant chaplain there and I'm telling him, hey, this is what I do. Um, You know, I speak the word and I'm in Austin for a few days. I got a few days open. I would love to go there to minister. And he says, well, you know, uh, to be honest with you, we've never had a woman speak here. Um, But as we keep on talking, he says, you know what I'm going to tell you? Will you come down here tomorrow and bring your CD with you? I had just recorded a music CD. And so I go down the next day and meet him and, you know, talking to him. And before you know it, he says, you know what? He says, I'm going to put you in there. I'm, I'm going to try. I'm going to try you, you in there. We've never done this, but we're going to put you in there to minister to these, these guys. And so the week before, the Sunday before, I was scheduled to minister at a church, a denominational church. And I got there. And when I got there, this guy came running out and he's like, are you Eve? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, our pastor said to tell you he's sorry. He double booked. He didn't mean to, but we got Troy Aikman speaking here. <laughs> and I thought, oh yeah, he double booked, right? right. Yeah, right. And um, right. so he said, he called another church across town and they're willing to have you speak if you want to, if you'll follow me. And so indeed I had no choice and I followed him and I spoke at the church. And so now I'm you know, speaking in this jail and they took me first to a room that was about the size of the podcast room here. And there was about 20, 25 guys in there. And they said, the CEO told me, we these, these are guys that don't even get to go to service. We don't even know why they told us to bring you here. And good luck. He said, if nobody responds, he says, it's because they're the worst of the worst. And I said, okay. So I, I sang some songs and I ministered the word. And when I gave the altar call, all 25 got saved. <laughs> come, uh, on, man. come on, yeah. And so I was like, okay, where's the hard ones, right? <laughs> and right. so they took me to the chapel and they brought in like four or five sets. I can't remember, but they would bring the guys in. I'd minister, then they'd bring take it and bring them in. And the chaplain and the assistant chaplain sat in. And when the service was over, they came up to me and the assistant chaplain said, Eve, we've never seen anybody reach them like you have here today. And he said, and and we have a lot of people in. He gave me a book by some guy. um, I don't know if he's still alive, Harold Connolly, who did Time Innocent in Terry Hot, Indiana, and um, then ended up doing prison ministry. And he said, as a matter of fact, he said, Troy Aikman comes in here. (laughs) And I thought, oh yeah, I just ran in him in church. So I know, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And um, he said, but Eve, listen to this. God is funny, his sense of humor. He said, Eve, anytime you come to Austin, he said, give us a call and we don't care who's put in here. We will cancel them out and put you in. Come on, that's right. And so anyway, I thought that was a funny story that I would share with you guys over there. And I haven't been back since. It's been a long time. Mount Olive, West Virginia um, over there. How many watchers do we got over there? You guys, I haven't heard that much from you and how are you acting to those around you come on you must be real new to a real vida but um let's straighten up right your brothers are your brothers no matter what color skin they have where they come from people are broken people are hurting just like you and i know that we put on a hard act and cover it up but the truth is people are broken and they're hurting yes and so you guys are the ones that can encourage each other and can do better by one another and you need to do it. Yeah. All right. 
Uh, Canal Washington listeners, hello to you guys. Coyote Ridge Correctional Center. Uh, Dylan, I'm not sure. I think it might be Mex from Marion, Ohio. Luis Sanchez from Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. Come on. Uh, let's see. Columbus Correctional from Whiteville, North Carolina. Ernest Johnson from Blackwater Correctional. Uh, let's see. Santa Rosa, California, MADF Correctional. Okay. Mail. They have a lot to say. Mail, special MA section, MS side. Wow. That's one of the most specific shout outs you've ever given. Right. Yes. And Mr. Aguirre over there. ODRC in Marysville, Ohio. Hamilton CI main unit in Jasper, Florida. Come on. Um, and I'm going to have right here, if Chris, can you explain to them about YouTube? Like some people are saying, I go watch one of your videos on YouTube and then I can't find any more. Yeah, they just have to, uh, when they get to the video, uh, click on where it says Real Vita TV and that'll take them to our page right. where they can subscribe. But they should be able to subscribe right there at the video. I haven't looked at the UI here in a well, minute. Well, not unless they've got, well, <clears throat> if they don't have yeah. a YouTube don't downloaded app, then they can't subscribe. No, you can subscribe on the uh, uh, desktop well, app let's, too. Well, let's drill down on it a little bit because people yeah. hear the word subscribe <clears throat> and they think it's like a magazine subscription. Right. You got to pay money. It's free. It's free. It's free. Yeah. All yeah. you need is an email address. So sign up uh, and to create your account and then subscribe to our podcast. Turn on the notifications and make sure and uh, like and share our videos, please. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and you're going to love the videos. Yeah. Most people either have an Apple uh, account or a Google account. If you got a, a Android phone, you got a Google account, you sign into YouTube using the Google account and it's, it's super easy. It's not. Right. You know, for a techie person, it's super easy. But for those that are not, it obviously is not that easy because so many are having a problem. Well, yeah. Okay, so people are coming. Let me tell the the those that are on the inside um, and, and the families that are watching on the outside, but you guys especially, can you tell your families that the only way they can give a shout out is when we are on a live? Right. They yeah. have to see us right at the a live. We're right on Facebook and YouTube at the same time. And then they can type in the hello, but unless we're on a live, that's the only way to do it. Yeah. Cause right. they're coming to the page and they're like, how do we do this? And they're just putting shout outs on every random post. <laughs> every yeah. post. And of course, nobody's yes. going to see that. So we right. have to be on a live. Right now, we do not have a set day and time for the lives. Um, we intend to do them, yes. you know, regularly, but we will announce beforehand either to you guys and or on the page, we'll say we're going to do a live on Wednesday at seven o'clock. Then that means they have to be on the page at seven o'clock central time. Right. And then they can do a shout right. out. Otherwise, they can't do it. They can't do it in our inbox. They can't do it on our page unless we're on live. And before yeah. you move on from that, it just takes us back to the subscription. It's why it's really important. If they don't want to miss the live, they need to like and follow us on Facebook so they can see those announcements on the Real Vita TV page yeah. and subscribe to the YouTube channel because when we're going to go live, there's going to be a, a, a notice a that's going to go out to all yeah, of our subscribers. And I won't, we won't go live without putting up, uh, you know, we'll schedule a little ahead of time so right. every subscriber will get notified if they have clicked the notification icon yeah yeah so i'm going to i'm going to announce also um right here before i forget there's no way at this point to answer everybody in the inbox either right um because all the families are coming to the inbox, even though I announce it on the page and say, we don't have a set day and time for the lives there, come to the inbox and say, when are you going to do a live? Right. So, um, you know, there's, we've had about 650 new subscribers in the past two days, probably wow. um, on, the, on just the Facebook page. And so there's no way to go to all 600 and do our work right. and do the things that we're the messages doing. Messages are coming so. in fast now. Yeah. Absolutely. So what else do you got, honey? Well, I want to read this scripture and we're real excited about today's program and about our uh, mystery guest that you'll meet in a minute. Uh, but this verse really, I think, is descriptive of his story. It's John chapter 12, verse 24. And Jesus is talking. He says, I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. Those who love their life in this world will lose it. But those who care nothing for their life in this Come world on. will keep it for eternity. Amen. Anyone who wants to be my disciple must follow me. 
because my servants must be where I am. And the Father will honor anyone who serves me. Um, so I, I do want to shout out our new map pins that have joined Vita Nation this week. I'm uh, excited because we got a bunch. Garden City, Kansas. Alamosa, Colorado. Grand Junction, Colorado, Cushing, Oklahoma, Rockford, Illinois, Baltimore, Maryland, Waco, Texas, shout out Baylor Bears, Asheville, North Carolina, Susanville, California, San Quentin, California, we're hearing a lot from San Quentin State Prison now, uh, Repressa, California, home of Folsom Prison, Come and on. if you grew up in the country like I did, it's impossible to hear Folsom Prison without hearing Johnny Cash in the back of your mind, right? Goldsboro, uh, North Carolina. St. Clairsville, Ohio, Salem, Oregon, Augusta, West Virginia, and extremely important, we've been waiting for, uh, we've got uh, just two maps pins left, states that, that haven't had a pin in it. And one of those went down today. That's Wilmington, right. Delaware signed in Delaware. today. So Delaware, yeah. we finally right. got Delaware. So the only one we're lacking is Alaska. And if we you're don't know if they got tablet in Alaska, yeah, they may um, not have tablet. All you need is one stamp to get your state on the map. You That's know, right. come on, man, just let's get it done. Um, okay. So our units coming up, McConnell, April 11th. Boyd, April 13th. Estelle, April 27th. Pallage, May 4th. Polunsky, May 18th and 19th. Yay. Michael, May 25th. And we just want to say we're sorry to Michael. We were supposed to be there last week. We got canceled because of the unit lockdown. No one's fault. We wanted to come see you guys and hopefully we'll see you all May 25th. Uh, Stringfellow, June 8th. Jester 3, June 9th, and we're getting really close to releasing our final Florida itinerary. There's a whole bunch of prisons. We're waiting on approval from the Florida State Office, and I'm looking forward to releasing that because uh, we're getting messages every week from people. Are you going, my brother is so-and-so place, you know, are you going Whatever there? we right. don't yeah. get on this trip right. to Florida, we will go back, you guys. So don't be discouraged, and, yes. you know, we get to be with you twice a week. I mean, things are happening. And besides us, you've got so many other ministries if you've got Pando and, and all that. And so we will be back and um, we're one be the nation. Come we on. are together in spirit. That's right. You guys don't forget that we are going to have the National Day of Prisoner Prayer like we did last time. And and think about it. So many things have happened. I've gotten good word from California, from Florida, and Texas is changing things. And remember, that's what we prayed for was for yes. reform and change and better conditions in jail and prisons across the nation. And that's what we're going to pray for again, along with COs and with each other and one prison praying for another and for another jail and for another state. Right. And that we are one nation. We are one yes. nation and that we together in prayer, there's nothing we can't accomplish. I'm going to read a portion of a letter. Do you got something that you wanted well, to I was say? just writing down May 1st, 2024 is the National May 1st. Day of Prisoner yeah, Prayer. Yeah, if I didn't say it was Wednesday, May 1st. Wednesday, May 1st. And are we going to fast that day? Like six yes, to six? Are. Yeah. 6 to 6. So 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. We're going to be fasting that day. Those that participated last year, we are going to be doing that again and concentrating on filling ourselves with the word and with prayer. Number one, prayer, prayer, yes, prayer. Right. Okay, yes. let me read this uh, portion of a letter. Dear Real Vida fam, I really want to thank you for everything that you do for us inmates. Ever since I started watching the podcast, I felt more encouraged to pick up my sword and spread the news with my fellow convicts or anyone that listens. Every cell I go to is normal now to see someone bumping the music. Even those who claim to not be religious, hello, hey, what's up? are slowly coming around. Your bait and fishing lines are working, family. Come on. I like to call it a holy setup. I pray that everyone <laughs> builds a relationship with our father. I'm in Orange County, California, or Orange, California. Amen. All right. Some days may feel like a dungeon of this, of the forgotten. I'm forever thankful that you guys never forget us. You guys create a light like a beacon for everyone that is hurting or alone can come to and feel God's love and grace. Thank you guys. I also wanted to bring up something that I need help clarifying. And we're going to talk about this. I was praying, asking God to lead me to a scripture the past couple of days. I've been drawn to Romans 8. I finally read the whole chapter and carried on to chapter nine. I get down to verse nine, where the apostle Paul reveals the promise of return. When Sarah has a son, I get to verse 12, where she told the older will serve the younger. And verse 13 reads, as it is written, Jacob, I have loved, but Esau, I have hated. Does this mean that God hates 
me. I am reading out of the English Standard Version Gideon Bible. Please help shed some light on this situation. Am I misinterpreting this? Thanks, Mama Eve. Okay, so... I wanted to talk about this because it's very, very important. And obviously there'll be those who are just to disagree, but they are wrong, right? So so God is not in our time, right? right. I, I used to describe it like, you know, remember those little, oh, if you're old, you had those wind up Snoopy toys or whatever and go, mm, 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 <laughs> right? Walk, and so yeah. you are higher than that because you're a human and you wind up the toy, but you don't live in its timing and it only lives for a few feet mm, mm, and it's done. We, we, we wound that up. God wound us up. We live for that very short of a time. And he's like, there isn't a time because he was always was and always will be. And so since he doesn't live in that, he knows the end from the beginning, the beginning yes. from the end. He's the alpha and the omega. He knows the choices. We have free will and he knows the choices that we're going to make. So, so he can say, Esau, I hated for his choices or I hated his choices. And Jacob, I love because he knew what they were going to do. Right. You see, so he can speak from the time from before they were ever born as if they already lived their whole life. Does right. that make sense? Right. And so, so that's how it is. And even we can somewhat do that, right? I read people well. And so um, a lot of times, you know, either way, you may have had experience with someone over and over and you know what they do. They say one thing, they live another. They mean to quit something, they don't quit it. They go right back. And so- you may talk to them and in that moment, it looks like there's a light turned on in the brain and they're going to stop and they may say they're gonna with whatever yeah. this thing is, but you know, like they, they're not going to do that. What they yeah. said they were going to do. They've said that for 20 years or whatever, 50 years and they've never done it, but they've always said they're going to done it. So that's kind of a little glimpse of what it's like, but our God knows all things. Yes. Right. So he knew the choices you were going to make before you ever made them, yeah. before you were ever born. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so no, because I don't want people going around thinking, well, I'm just, am I not one of the chosen? Right. So I want to serve God, but maybe I can't. And this is the questions that puts in people's minds is maybe he don't love me. Maybe I'm like one of the hated and, and, and I never can be saved. So maybe I shouldn't even try. That is not the truth. Right. So um, I wanted to answer this. I wanted you to know that you are loved and you got breath. You're forgiven. You can repent. You can serve him. And you don't even have the desire to serve God without God putting that in you. Right. Exactly. Right. He yes. put that in you, all those good things. And so um, that is the answer for that. And keep your letters if you have any different thing or la changla for you. Andale. Yeah. Okay. So we're. Uh, do we have anything else before we go to the break? No. I do. Oh. Okay. We have two new members of the YouTube Real Vita support family. Awesome. Uh, Kiara Weems and Amber Alverson. Thank you guys so much. That means so much to us. Amazing. All right. Well, we're going to go to a music break. And then we're going to be back with our special guest. Hey, bro, we got an emergency. I need you over here right now. Yeah, hurry up. All right. Praise Jesus. Rip Wagon. It's been a long, dark, lonely road. Coming up, I had a vision of being a big star running through my head. Yes, I am. But the devil had a target on me, now yeah. Mama was being abused, and when I started to lose, I guess I tried to numb the pain until I just didn't care. There's gotta be a bigger purpose for me. There's gotta be a bigger purpose for me. Been a long, dark, lonely road Coming up, I had a vision of being a big star Running through my head 
Surrounded by all these demons and I'm alone inside Somewhere amidst all the madness all my dreams died The light went out of my eyes and I believed all of the lies That I was worthless and I'd never really go nowhere Misunderstood by everybody, I was a dark child Rebellion stirring up in me, I started smoking loud I never thought that if I just opened my heart That God would give me everything that I dream Y'all can I preach now? You could be wide awake and still be asleep now, yeah Stuck on my own to fight alone Now it's clear to me that Jesus never went nowhere Jesus always had a purpose for me And Jesus always had a purpose for me I can see light now at the end of the road So, you want to go for a ride, cowboy? Let's go, cowboy. People hating on rip breakers because they thought that we never really go nowhere. You know, we used to want to be big stars, have all the money and cars, and be famous for dropping hits. But none of that could ever make us feel like this I can see light down at the end of the road oh, 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 yeah. I can see light down at the end of the road oh, 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 yeah. I can see light down at the end of the road I can see light down at the end of the road That we blessed and Jesus gon' take us to who knows where yeah. He can take us anywhere and Jesus always had a purpose for me Hey guys, we're back. We're excited to have a special guest with us today. Uh, just want to tell you a little bit about him before we um, go to him and have him uh, just tell you about his life. His first felony was at the age of 10 for wow. Grand Theft Auto. At 16, he was on the run from the Popo for a false murder charge. Mm. And at 18, Man. he was already in prison where he spent uh, most of the next 20 plus years of his life. And despite all that, despite struggling with addiction, despite struggling with mental illness diagnoses, mm. despite demonic oppression, Come on. Uh, he found Jesus and Amen. revolutionized and changed his life. And now he's making music. He's traveling all over the United States. He was at the Grammys, which is crazy when you consider where Come he comes on, where from. Come on, where he came from. So yes. exciting. We're we're excited to have with us today Nicholas Greathouse, aka Nikki Gracious. Nikki What's up? Gracious. How y'all doing? Hey. Praise God. It's an honor to be here. Yeah. Man, we're so glad that you are here. And, you know, he drove like this little, is it a bus? It's What's it called? Little. It's, it's not a, little. <laughs> it's a little Thor motor coach. Man, yeah, but awesome. he drove that all the way here from, from where? Indiana. Yes, Man, wow. to be here. And we're so, so grateful for that. You know, when I first saw your music, um, you know, I, I, I knew. Like I knew you, I mm. knew you were us. I knew that they would relate to you. We've only put a couple songs up so far. We're going to put a couple up today, but um, they, they've they loved it. They, they relate to who you are. And that's because I didn't know your whole story, but you could just see it, you know, you yeah. could just feel it. And we had a, quite a, a good long conversations today, some interesting things. I hope to get some interesting out, pulled out of him. Um, there's much to say and um, don't let the outer shell fool you. Um, because there's an intelligent, Man, intelligent guy smart. in yeah. there, you know? Really so smart. anyway, you know, we, we do always like to start with some of your childhood, like, like what formed Nikki, you know, what, what was your life like home when you were growing up? Uh, so <clears throat> I was born in Huntington, Indiana, uh, about three weeks old. My pops moved me to the Carolinas 
And I was raised in the Carolinas until I was about six. Uh, when I was there with my grandparents, uh, it, it was, a, I guess, what people would consider to be a, a normal setting for a child. Uh, you know, we had meals prepared for us and uh, all of our clothes were clean and, you know, she kept us clean and we had, uh, you know, manners implemented and discipline and love. And it's uh, snatched away pretty quick. Uh, so, you know, God bless my, my mom and dad. They they gave it their their best shot. Yeah. Uh, but it was it was kind of rough. So loud music, uh, you know, partying, weed smoke, and drugs. You know, sex, drugs, rock and roll. And then, uh, so was there any God involved at all in your childhood, like at all in in anyone around you? No, ma'am. No, you didn't I, get taken to church by anybody or anything like that. So when I was maybe like seven or eight. Uh, my dad got on his kick of like sending us on Wednesday nights to go to church. Uh, I think it was just because he was tired of us. Right. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I went on Wednesday nights to a service. I would get on a van with other kids okay. and just try to talk to girls. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, and, and that, that fizzled out as quick as it started a couple months, you know, uh, uh, and the the Jesus that I got introduced at or to to that young it was that same kind of. Uh, I'll beat you up, Jesus. Right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Looking for you yeah. to do something yeah. wrong. Like you gonna burn in hell, boy. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Like, what? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. So did that that do you remember that pushing you away to maybe that is something that you you don't want? Yeah, I mean, it, even even as a child, there was something in my spirit that said, "Hey, God's not like that." Wow, mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I, I thought, hey, these people don't have it figured out. Wow. Mm. You know. Yeah. And they're representing him. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So it was real easy for me to run from it. Right. So you, you talked about the Carolinas, but then at some point you moved to Florida. Tell us a little bit about how that happened and what happened when you got there. So uh, we went back to Indiana for just uh, maybe a year or so. And uh my dad loaded up old beat up station wagon with all of our stuff and we head out to Florida and uh, we moved to a rough part of the city that we went to down there. And, uh, you know, I was, we were one of the only white families mm. <laughs> there, you know, so it was uh, kind of rough going to school uh, every day. Uh, you know, people shooting at our house and stuff like that, just wanting us to leave the neighborhood and uh, not wanting me to go to that school or be there, you know. And it wasn't like something that we uh, had a choice. You know, we just, we couldn't afford to live nowhere else. And it was like, <laughs> you know, my pop said, just come out here with bullet holes in the house. And, you know, we're not going nowhere. You know, right. we don't, we have nowhere to go. <laughs> if, uh, if we did, we'd be gone. Through the whole street. Right, we, we'd be gone. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 but, uh, you know, walking to school, uh, I was drawn to, uh, the hip hop culture at a very young age. I, I, I wanted to learn how to beatbox. Uh, <laughs> so, I, uh, I learned how to beatbox and, um, uh, it got to the point to where a few of the kids in the neighborhood was that they heard me doing it. It was like, how long can you do that? <laughs> and I'm like, man, as long as you need. And they're like, well, come over here. So it got me like into a, uh, a circle of, of people that, you know, Acceptance. thought that I was valuable. Yeah. Yeah. And it made me feel really good. Uh, and it developed in me at a very early age, a passion for poetry and songwriting and uh, performing arts. And uh, and I also, you know, I I... I had a whole bunch of people that had my back. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, right. 
So your life changed. It turned. Yeah, it changed. Absolutely. And I do want to bring that out, you guys, because, um, you know, not very many, but, you know, if you grew up white or black in South Texas and it was all Hispanic, you tended to get shunned and bullied sometimes and made fun of and um, beat up and all those things. It doesn't just happen with one race. It's happened mm. with all. So here you are in the hood and you're the only white boy, you know, getting bullied, getting beat up, getting, you know, made fun of and all kinds of stuff until... But but what the devil meant for your bad, God turned in for the good. You know, this is now you rap, you know, and and yeah. it started there surrounded by hip hop culture and with the beatboxing and, and all of those things, you know, look what God has done with it. So. Well, I said I might, before we got on the podcast, <laughs> I said I may actually put you on I the I want to hear some beatbox. Yeah. Can you Let's beatbox for us just a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> it's probably going to sound real old school, but I'll give it a shot. <laughs> okay. Come on. Okay. Yeah. 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 You got that done. yeah. Oh, so on. I would just change it up sometimes to give yeah. it a different tempo or a different That's speed cool. or a different sound. Awesome. And then, uh, yeah. It was awesome. I yeah. love that story, how God turned that around and 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 then it got ingrained in mm. you. It's something that you took up, started writing lyrics and poetry and you know, all that. And and that's that's how you ended up Nikki Gracious here today, you know? Okay. That's right. So so when is it that you go get like you you get locked up finally? When is your first time? Well, I guess it's eighteen, right? Yeah, my my first time in adult prison or jail. Uh I had just turned eighteen. Um uh, I, I robbed somebody at gunpoint, uh, went to prison, and I understood that, you know, these things just come with the territory. But at that young of an age, when a judge tells you, hey, you know, you're sentenced to 10 years. Wow. Sentencing you to 10 years. Uh, you, and what was strange is that, like, when he said that, I feel like, ah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, you give me a whole dime. That's mm -hmm. how, right? you know, mm. they got to give me that kind of time because I'm on that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But then when you get three, four years into that 10-year bid and you still have six, seven years left and you done jacked your little time off for your behavior and uh, you sitting there and you got all that, you know, and that reality hits you and you realize how much your life is getting ready to be missing. It's a hard pill to swallow, you know. But uh, you know, I didn't learn that 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 first slap in the face when I was uh, a jit. Uh, it wasn't enough to learn me, you know. I just kept kept going against the grain and you know trying to ascend to that which I was thinking I needed to be, which was all smoke and mirrors. All that was just all lies. Yeah. You know. So when do you finally come to God? How did you come to God? So I had gotten to a point. Uh, I my once I went to prison, that kind of it, it it developed my training in that area, so to speak. So I just became better uh, at doing what I was doing and uh, implemented. Uh, those strategies when I got out and it got me into an even worse situation. Uh, so me taking all these things in as if I was developing some type of skill set, I was hurting myself. Uh, but what was, you know, unbeknownst to me, there's this unseen force that I had been reflecting on my whole life that I had overlooked. and it was conditioning me, you know, to, to, to kind of, all those things that I saw on the screen, even though in reality, people are saying, you know, that's just make-believe. That's just fake. You don't do that. But yet you're cheering when they do it. You're excited when they do it on that screen. So, I want, I want you to be excited about me. So young men, they begin to mimic that. They don't care what right. you're telling them. 
right. not yeah. to do. Right. They, 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 they want to experience that which is yeah. taking place and, and the people that they're seeing what they're looking on these screens and whatnot. And I was looking at these dudes like Tupac. I was looking at these dudes like Bone Thugs, you know, um, <clears throat> who were able to kind of take that lifestyle and that struggle that's associated with the socioeconomic status that I was a part of and be able to make it glamorous, make it seem desirable. Like that that was something that a young man should uh, attain to be. And because that is the only thing that I saw continually in front of my face that, yeah. that everybody was excited about, that's what I attained to become. Mm. Right? And I didn't realize until later in life that it, it, that it, it wasn't Pac. You mm -hmm. know, it wasn't Bone. Yes. It wasn't none of them people. And it was the enemy. Right. Now, you almost died once with an overdose of what fentanyl, right? Yes, Tell us about that. So I had been living in Florida for about two years. I had been out of prison since 2015. Uh, and I didn't do any heavy drugs my whole life, uh, except for, you know, just like the plate of the weed, the, you know, yeah. pills and stuff like that, just playing around. But in terms of full-blown heavy drug use, uh, in 2015, when I got out of prison, I had been gone so long that I really didn't even know how to function. Mm -hmm. uh, I had zero life management skills. Mm -hmm. um, and to be honest, people were scared of me, but I, I, I was more scared of them than they were of me, really. And uh, just I didn't even know how to turn on my phone that, that they gave me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, how am I going to function out here? So... Is like the only thing that I resorted to was what I did before, and that was going and hanging around with the same people, mm -hmm. and and them same people had graduated to yes. heavy drug use right. by that wow. time. Wow! Yeah. So uh, that's what was in front of my face, and uh, I started using pills, and then pills went from that to heroin. And then uh, heroin to pretty much anything. Tell I us about that day off. that you... So the heroin had gotten to the point to where I had been using it every day. And the dealer that I was driving for, he went to prison. So I was withdrawing real bad. And I went to the hood and got a bag. And the guy told me when he handed me the bag, he was like, bro, be easy on this. Mm. And, you know, when you're in withdrawal, you're not trying to hear that. Right. So I did my thing. Uh, and I thought I had missed my vein, so I was upset with myself. And then uh, my ex-wife at the time, she she was like, did you miss? And I said, yeah, I think I missed. And that was the last thing I remember saying. And she drove, she said, for about a minute <clears throat> before she looked in the rear view, saw that I was blue and my lips were purple. She drug me out of the car, started administering CPR. The police showed up, told her to get away from my body, that I was dead. Uh the lieutenant, the EMT, hit me three or four times with the Narcan, didn't bring me back. And, uh, you know, my ex-wife just begged him, please hit him again with that Narcan. And he, he hit me again. And, and that last time that he hit me, I came too. Uh, but when I left the hospital, you know, something was different. It's like I went through my whole life just thinking that I was you know, that reality was what it was. There was nothing else besides what there was for me to see. And I had seen it all, that, that I had a good understanding of it. Uh, that was not accurate. Mm. Mm. Um, How old were you at this time? I was 36. Mm. Wow. And I walked out of that hospital and I was hearing thousands of voices audible voices. Uh, so up until this moment, you hadn't had any diagnosis or had never heard voices? No. Okay. No, no mental issues, no, no trouble with anything like that. But now suddenly in this situation, wow. 
all of a sudden you're hearing voices. Yeah. Yeah, schizophrenia. And, and I, you know, I, I, it, as soon as I walk out of the hospital door, I, I hear these voices and I respond, you know, by speaking and like, who is that? Hmm. Wow. That, and, but I'm looking around, I'm not seeing anyone. Uh, and it, it was, it was many of them. It wasn't just one voice. Uh, and that, that tormented me for a couple of years. Uh, I almost killed myself. I ran my head off the bars of the drunk tank, uh, trying to get them to go away. Wow. And, and I woke back up and, uh, you know, the voices are still there. Uh, you know, as long as you're alive, we're here. Wow. And so I did it again, uh, knocked myself out, woke up on the gurney in the hospital at the jail commander, you know, asking me, you know, hey, please stop whatever you're doing. Like, this is insane. I like, <sighs> I had completely lost my mind. Uh, I was, I was being beaten by things that I couldn't even see. Yeah. Uh, and because, you know, I had no teaching, I had no understanding, I had no upbringing or background and uh, things of a spiritual nature, I was helpless. You know, they just, it was just torment. Okay, so tell us when when you find God um, at this point, and then you're not on medication now. So what happens then? Is it when you find God that you get deliverance? Absolutely. So me starting to hear those voices led me into believing that there was some grand hoax against me that everybody mm -hmm. on the planet somehow... Wow. was in on this right. and that I was the center of all of that and that mm -hmm. I was being played and that everyone around me was a part of it somehow like the Truman Show. The Truman yeah, Show. yeah. Right. I mean, that's typical for schizophrenia. Yeah. 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 And um, and I lashed out at, at, yeah. at, at the people that I loved. Yeah. Uh, right. You know, I, I watched my mom get beat up as a little kid you know we'd go from house to house and it wouldn't be too long before you know me and my sister were uh taking garbage bags full of clothes to the next battered women's shelter uh you know it and i used to look at my mom with them big black eyes and i would i would you know i would try to soothe her and you know rub her back and tell her you know uh you know, when I get married or when I grow up, mom, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll never, I'll never do that to to nobody. Like somebody did that to you, you know, and she would, you know, I know, baby, I know you're, you're a good boy. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, uh, I, yeah. I, I ended up doing some bad stuff to my wife. I, I, I beat her bad, like a man. Uh, she did a little bitty thing like my mom. Uh, and, you know, that, that's, that, that was a choice. I don't want to minimize that in any way. Uh, you know, that, that, that was my choice. You know, I, I knew better. Uh, that power... Uh, I allowed it to move me, you know. The yeah. devil always takes us further than we ever Absolutely. intended to go. It, you, you know, he, the devil is not like God. If, if God, you only give an inch, he only takes that inch. If the devil, you give that little inch, he's going to bust the door open. Yeah. Yeah. That's his end. That's what he was looking for. And so we all have gone further in areas of our lives, every single one, than you ever thought you would. Yeah, but I got just, to that. Yeah. I got to that point, and 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 when I told, I was crawled under a bridge. I'd been walking all night. I was losing my mind. I had no idea what was up, down, right, left. And I crawled under this bridge, and I and I was like, you know, I'm experiencing all these things. 
me experiencing these things lets me know if those things are real, I know you got to be real. Mm. And you got to be this Jesus, this Yahshua dude, because if you're not, we're all in trouble. Yeah. Wow. And not only that, but I know if that all these things, when I say your name, these things move around. Mm. And mm. I don't even know you. Wow. Mm. I know you can either, and 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 look at how, what I've done from the beginning of my life to now. I hate me. Like, man, like, what am I doing here? Like, so I done did all this stuff and I want to kill myself, but, on, I, but I'm a coward too because I can't smoke myself. So not only am I all these things, but I'm also a coward. Like, man, what? Come on. Like, either kill me or change me. Yeah. Wow. I can't do either. I can't, I can't kill myself and I can't change, man. Mm. But I don't like this. I, I hate this. And mm. I came up out from underneath that bridge. And here I am. Wow. It's amazing. I can't even... You don't, you, I can, you don't make this stuff up. You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> I did 21 years in a joint. I was 40 years old almost when I got it. Like, <laughs> so when did you start rapping for God? So the last bid that I went and did, I had had an encounter with the Lord and I had met the Lord before I went back. And when I went in that time, brothers, I told me they were like, man, something's different in you. Mm. Something's different in you. I'm like, yeah, man, I met God. Wow. And man, I'm starting to, I don't want to do this stuff no more. And then the gang that I was part of, I went to them like, man, I'm not doing this no more. And they're like, bro, you think you just... <laughs> <laughs> it's a volunteer. And I'm like, hey, look, it is what it is. Yeah. If something's going to happen, let's get it on out the way right now. Come on. Because I'm not going back to that life. Wow. Yeah. Let, let, I, I don't want to go to sleep. I don't want to have to wrap no books around me, bro. If you're going to do something, go and get it out the way because I'm not doing that no more. And when they saw that it was real, mm. wow, they respected it. Come on. There was no ramifications. They was like, bro, that's real. And, and bro, God bless you. All right. And then, and then I was able to be effective ministering in there. And a brother told me, look, if you can be effective in here. Yes. Yeah. With everything you've gone through, bro, when you touch mm. down, it's going to be all right. You're going to make it. Come on. Right. And with no life management skills, I touch down and uh, the Lord's like, give me that gift. And I'm like, man, uh, and I like, <laughs> you talking about what, music? <laughs> no, I'm too old for that. You know, like, uh, like I was telling y'all, I'm sitting there thinking like, nobody wants to hear, uh, Uncle Nick rapping. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> what about you? Yeah. You know, but uh, I, I did. I gave it to him, and he, and he, 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 he made made it possible, Come which is on. what he does. He's a guy of impossible. So Amen. we're going through so much so quickly. So, um, so tell us like what you're doing now. What's happened since you you got into music? You got out. How long you've been doing the Christian rap, and what's going on now? So in 2020, I got out and within Man. like three to six months, Man. Uh, my sister recorded me just doing an impromptu wow. Wow. version of the very first song that I ever wrote for God. Mm. Which is named what? Stand Up. Okay. Mm. The very first song that I ever wrote for him. And... And she posted it or where did this go? She posted it on Facebook and I was doing tree work at the time. So I'm at work trimming trees and stuff and she hits me up and she's like, Bub, so I, I posted that video of you wow. rapping. I'm like, what? Yeah. I'm like, why did you do that? And she's like, no, uh, it's got this many views. Thousand. And I'm like, that's, a, I'm like, that ain't, that's a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, no, I'm serious. Like, I can't, like there's thousands of people hitting me up. I don't know what to do. And I'm like, wow. And I go on and I look and Man. by like the end of the day, it was at like 50,000. I'm like, God. oh my mm. gosh, what in the world? And then 
two, three days later, I'm getting calls wow. from people all over the place. Come Struggle on. Jennings, like uh, uh, these, all kinds of people. Yes, yes. Like, my, I was just this person. Come on. Yeah. I asked God to change that dude or kill that dude. Yeah. And now all this stuff is happening and it's making me a different person. Mm. Mm. That's God. That's God. Yeah. Come on. When he yeah. when he wants to put you on the front lines, he knows exactly how to do it. He don't need your help. Like you weren't yeah. even in on it, no. you know. He said, yeah. "I'll do this without you." That's you know, right. I yeah. mean, it's crazy the way God does those things. Um, right now, there's a young man that got a hold of us like two days ago. He just got out one month ago, and he he did a rap um, in this crazy room, which I'm going to put up. And um, and then he had another video. He sent me two videos, and I looked at the first one. I thought, I said, "That's pretty good." And he sent me another one. I thought, "Let me check this out." But it was I was shocked because it was the first one. It was not rap. It was preaching, and this young man is preaching. Preaching, better than most preachers I ever hear out here. <laughs> I mean, and it, wow. it just blows the mind and because he's the real deal. And yeah. that's the thing is you got to start in there. Start in there. And that's what I always tell them. Live it in there. Work on those around you in there. The most broken people are surrounding you. That's right. right? And, and they're not better than you. They're putting on a hard act just like you are. They're hurting too. They're saying the same things. That, you know how many times I've heard that? Lord, change me or kill me. Do something. I can't live like this anymore. Yeah. And that God knows you're serious and he takes you up on that. And and mm. he's going to open the doors. Like it's the current of God. It's like a raging river that mm. takes you where you need to go. You can't even help it. No, Like you right. just end up there. Your story sounds a lot like Joe Nestor's, you know, Joe. Joe yeah, Nestor's, right? Because yeah, yeah, he was in the street too, and then you know he went viral too. He didn't know either, and he didn't even wow. know what social media was. When I talked to him, he said, you know, I I got on, and everybody's like, why don't you put that on Facebook? He's like, what's that? Yeah, you know, he'd already been ten years in the streets, you know, and look what God has done with him. And God is raising up those Nickies and Joes um, in, in the last day to reach mm. those behind bars. And I know that your message and your lyrics and your rap just connects with so many. Um, just tears streaming yeah. down my face when I first saw you. And you know, Andy was here earlier. She was telling you the same thing. Is like, yeah, tears were streaming down my face. I mean, God has done so much. So, so I want to ask you about another thing. We've had a lot of conversations today and your mom had cancer and I know we were trying to get you here actually and that's how I found out. You're like, my mom's, you know, sorry, I haven't answered you. My mom has cancer right now and I'm trying to be with her. And then you told us today, because I asked you, how's your mom doing? Tell us what happened. <laughs> uh, so <clears throat> she went to an ENT about a year ago. They said that she had a mass in her esophagus on her vocal cord and that it was bigger than her vocal cord. So you couldn't even see her vocal cord when they went in to look at it. Uh, shortly after that, she got a diagnosis of uh, high stage two lung cancer, uh, maybe early stage three. Uh, you know, she had a couple of nodules in her right lung and then uh, one in the entryway cavern of her left. Uh, she was 84 pounds. Man. She had a blood clot in her right arm when all this was taking place. Mm. And uh, she also got uh, internal bleeding uh, from the blood clot. So, I mean, she was literally yeah. that close. Um, we went to the hospital, started to get uh, treatment lined up for her. And... Uh, you know, thinking back on this, it hurts my heart, but I, I didn't even, that whole time I was so frantic about getting her help from all of these doctors that I never asked the Lord to heal my mom. Wow. And uh, one day she was having a hard time not wanting to go to chemo, not wanting to go to treatment. She was just exhausted, tired. And, uh, you know, I, I, I asked her, you know, do you, do you believe that God can heal you? You know, and my mom's not a believer like that. She, she I mean, she is now. But uh, she was she a motorcycle. Not, you told me a yeah, motorcycle girl. Yeah, exactly. And uh, so she said, yeah, I believe he can heal me. And I was like, do you want to pray for that? Mm. And she, yes, I do. You know, and so we prayed. 
And uh, again, when we were at the hospital in front of the doctor and the nurse, we, we prayed again for the Lord to heal her or for him to use those doctors, either one, but either one for his glory in her life, yeah. you know. Uh, and when they wheeled her into the operating room, she had her arm up and she was saying, praise God. Mm. And I'd never seen that from my mama. Uh, and when I sat down in the waiting area and they told me, hey, when this uh, name that has your mom's name in it turns from red to green, that means she's done with her surgery and you can go into post-op and you can be with her. It's going to be about two and a half hours. We already got the surgery mapped out. It's already planned. We know what we're going to do, how we're going to make our cuts, all that. So they go in and I go out into the waiting area and I have just enough time to use a restroom and sit down and... Uh, her name turns green. <laughs> wow. And uh, I turned around to go inquire about what was going on. And the doctor was coming out, taking off his hat and his mask. And he had this look of uh, fright and kind of confusion on his face. And, and he approached me and asked me if he could speak to me about the tumor that was in my mom's throat, how long it had been there. Uh, and I asked, I said, what's going on? Like, uh, why aren't you in there? In surgery and he said and then Nick there's no there's no need for surgery that's what I want to talk to you about so I I took this picture two weeks ago and the tumor in my mom's throat was so big that it looked like she would probably choke on that at any minute you could it looked like she couldn't breathe let alone you couldn't even see her vocal cord um and the doctor said Nick, the tumor is gone. There's no detachment site. I haven't made any cuts. Uh, there's no remnants of the tumor around the site where the tumor was. I'm hmm. I'm confused. And I said, Doc, are, are you a man of faith? And he looked me in the eyes and he said, I'm a man of intelligence. <laughs> and I said, you know, I believe that, you know. And I said, I, I too would, would like to believe that I'm a man of intelligence. I, my critical thinking is intact. My cognitive skills are intact. Uh, I have four years post-secondary education. Uh, I was thorough with my education. I enjoyed it. I made Dean's List every semester. Uh, and I, I challenged him to think historically of any man who humans ever thought was wise and whether or not that particular human that we thought was wise thought he was wise. And if they were, nine times out of ten, they said, no, I know absolutely nothing. And in the face of all of the knowledge that there is to accumulate, one man could be smarter than every other person on the planet, but yet still in the face of all that there is to know, that man would still know absolutely nothing. Right. So for those things that we don't know, that, that have answers that exist beyond our ability to perceive or discern, that is who I call on for those answers, that name that I used in the prayer that you were present for. Hmm. And I'm not trying to preach to you. I'm not trying to sell you nothing, Doc. I believe you're a man of intelligence. And as one man of intelligence to another, I'd ask you to just consider with what you've seen and what you heard to consider what you've seen here today. And what I told you. And the way he looked at me. <laughs> because he, he, he heard that prayer and he didn't have an answer. Right. That exists outside of our ability to compute that. Now, I know. I know what happened. Yeah. Uh, and I believe that it, it may have prompted him to, to, to seek out that name. Come on. Yeah. yeah. And, and and that was a, for me, that was a win. I, I walked out of there just floating that day. Man. You know, for my mama and uh, for that doctor and what it is that he went and looked up and started reading. I know it, I know it prompted him. Amen. Amen. 
Honey, you got anything you else you want to add or ask him? Or uh, One thing we talked about earlier that I thought was really cool is you're just talking about rapping and kind of your thought about rapping as far as ministry and what your real goals are. Just tell him a little bit about that too. Okay, so rap, rap is cool. You know, the skill, the art, it's very alluring. Uh, but I think, I think, you know, people got to be careful. Uh, you know, just because I can rap, uh, man, that rap don't make me righteous. Right. Mm. You know, and because you, you, you think those words might sound righteous, you think that I'm righteous. Thus opening yourself up to receive anything it is I have to give you. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, these rappers, man, be careful. Keep and your eyes entertainers, on Jesus. Yeah, right. yeah entertain, we got to keep our eyes like, on Jesus. That, that rap is a tool, just like you said, sis. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. And if we start, if, if us as musicians, if we look at that like, okay, I'm a soldier. This is the weapon, the word, and everything I got in this tool belt is for me to use. Uh, that's, was it saying Colossians about songs and hymns and praises? Hmm. And sing, like it says that, you know, sing them to him. Right. And that's my particular gifting. <laughs> Yes. So that's my tool belt. So right. so so those songs, uh, that's that's all I'm using that for is just a tool. Come yeah. on, and but you know, and you say that, but your songs have a, a message yeah. that alone changes lives. But I I know what you're saying, and and that's how you know I use so much of even when I went to Travis County is like I sing. Right, yeah. I, I don't. I'm not telling them the power punches behind the singing. You know, yeah, I got, right. you think that's cool? I got something a lot better. You know, <laughs> I got something to tell you. You know, right. and we've done that with the fishing with with you guys is you know Hog Mob and Kingdom Music and you know just so many. Um, like, let's put the music out there. I, but for one, they're going to see they they always say people dressed like me, people just like me with my life. And if they can right. do it and they can change, and maybe I can too. It gives them that hope. It gives them that they see the visual. We're not just saying it. It. This is the proof, now. right? Yeah. And so, but I, I would use that too, but, but it's just a little bit. It's like, you're seeing a tiny little bit of the picture and you know, good, good people, people that sell things like Amway and you yeah. know, whatever they're, they're giving you just a little bit. They're like, look what this can do. And they're like, okay, okay exactly. that's right. 10 Come bucks. Yeah. Let me show you the $3,000, yeah. right? You know, <laughs> and that's what we got is this, this power punch of the Lord. That's real. Yeah. That's real. Like, you think this is good. You think that presence is good. Me and Sam will sing and, and a, you know, I'm not a singer, but me and Sam sing and they'll write to us and say, I was weeping through your song. Something came over me. I decided I didn't want to be this. I didn't want to worship Santa Muerte no more. I didn't want right. to do this thing no more. I decided I want to get out of the gang. One guy, we went to Clement's unit and went to the back to G5s and SEG. And he was at the door. We were already leaving. He said, but Mama Eve, when you stood there and you did this, he said, that's it. I'm off this gang. Just a little bit of love. Yeah. It was a fishing line. He said, I'm out this gang. I'm letting them know. He said, I sent a kite right away. He said, hey, I'm out. They said, come out to the yard. He said, okay. <laughs> came on out to the yard. They said, dude, I can't believe you came out to the yard. Wow. Like, go in peace. Mm. Come yeah. Do your thing. Come on. Get better. Mm. Come on. God is doing that all over the nation, right? Because it just it's just one little thing. It's one little fishing line. And it, to me, it wasn't a fishing line. I'm, I'm letting them know I love you. They won't let me come to your door. But I want you to know that I love you. And I see you trying to give me stamps. I can't go get them. He was trying to give me 30 stamps. Oh. He was like, come here. He was like, come here. Right? <laughs> Sweet. You know, I can yeah. give you 30 stamps. And I was like, I can't go to get your stamps. But I love you. I love you. I want you to know I love you. God loves you. Like, yeah. please know I love you. I thought, I hope he knows that I can't go to the door. I'm going to get in trouble. And he's going to get in trouble. But I love you. And he said, that was it. Yeah. You know? 
And so we're putting out all these fishing lines, but I'm telling you fishing with a good reel. <laughs> yeah. Because good the bait. message yeah. that you got in there, it ain't just bait. Yeah. You're the real deal. And, um, you know, it's what we look for on, on this podcast is to bring people that are real. I was so glad when you said, I'll come and I'll drive across the country. Oh, wow. So when y'all said y'all have me. Oh, oh man. Yeah. We're just so glad, you know. Y'all are trying to tell me about episodes. I'm like, oh, yeah, I've seen that one. I've already <laughs> seen that one. I've seen so that one awesome. too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, you yeah. guys, look how much God is doing and how many people love you because there's so many going, who yeah. loves us? And and that's what they love about Real V, that they're like, we know you love us, but you know what? Nikki loves you too. And right. guess what? Yeah. Rare Breed loves you too. And Hogma loves you too. And there's so many who love you. You are not unloved. And number one is God. Amen. You're such a miracle. Your your life is such a miracle. So many ways. We talked about so much we can't get out today. We're already at the end of the hour. So So what I really would like is... For you to talk to the guys that are behind bars and gales that are across the entire nation in jails and prisons everywhere and let them know what what would you say to them about about God, about, you know, what what do you have on your heart to say to them? Share with them what you would like. The most valuable thing that you'll ever have is worth more than anything else you could ever imagine. Freedom, home, wife, kids, car, bank account, all that. Yeah, yeah that's cool. But you have that where you are right now still. That was placed in you by God. That can't be taken from you. Come on. Cultivate that. Yes. Cultivate that right there where you are. Call on his powers. Power is not limited by those walls. Yeah. Man, revival can start right there where you're at. Mm -hmm. In that cell, wherever you're at, whatever seg unit, whatever card table, you know, wherever you're at, man, whatever bunk, whatever open dorm, day room, TV room, Man, you can turn that thing into a house of God. And you can cultivate that which can never be taken from you. Ever. Right there where you are. In a way that could change this whole planet. From sitting in a cell, man. You ain't lost yet. Don't give up. That's all I ask. Amen. Man. Amen. We're so glad that you were here. I'm going to ask for you to lead them in prayer as Amen. we close. Absolutely. Father, I thank you for this time. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak on your behalf to these men and women. And Father, I ask that you would meet them where they are, that you would remind them that there is no level of security that can keep your love away from them, Lord God. The things that you have prepared for their life, Lord, I ask that you would just allow them to see that no matter where they are, that they can access the things of heaven right there where they are. I ask that you would strengthen them, that you would keep them, and that you would prompt them to be a light in a dark place and to change these things. Change these things because they can. Lord, in your name, by your power, I thank you for them. I thank you for the things that you're doing in their hearts. I ask that you just cultivate them. Have mercy on them. Love them. I praise you. I thank you for it. In the name of your son, Yeshua. Amen. A lot of people told me I was crazy when I had an encounter with God. Lately, I've been hearing a lot of people called crazy. I'm here to tell you that I am crazy. I'm crazy about Jesus. And what I experienced was spiritual warfare. So don't ever think you're losing it. You're just facing a spiritual battle. And you need to call on Jesus. If you're looking for me, you can catch me in the trenches. Going 5150, cause I'm always on a mission. Turn to real life in the the crowd going hard for the king, repping what he all about. I said, if you're looking for me, you can catch me in the trenches. Going 51 50, cause I'm always on the mission. Turned up, turned up, real loud, real loud. Going hard for the king, repping what he all about. Welcome to the show, so cold with the flow. Gotta think the man above said the 
trust, no fear of the enemy. I'm right, she in the spot on the block where it's hot with Jesus setting up the shop. No, they talking, think it's logo, cause this is where I strayed my ass go every day where I let my demons play. Don't be foolish, can't nobody question the power of the Christ. Mask off, new creation, now my light shine bright. He left the 99 to bring me back so he could teach. Going city to city, ASAP, like a preach. Got swag with the summer, Nikki Gracious on the track. Fully walking, this a war, we taking God's people back. Hey, if you looking for me, you can catch me in the trenches. Going 5150, cause I'm always on a mission. Turn to real life, in the middle of the crowd. Going hard for the king, repping what he all about. I see if you looking for me, you can catch me in the trenches. Going 5150, cause I'm always on a mission. Turn to To my mind up, I'm trying to give you a dime. These rappers be talking about killing the dope, and half of the time they be lying. And the other half, they daydreaming about how they can sell you another lies. The 12 year old who's listening to him, who's really about it and ready to die. I tell him about Jesus, I don't operate like these lames do. I'm taking the game for these secular rappers, and I ain't even gonna say thank you. It's time for a change, God. I'm hoping I could be a vessel for use to fight this evil. There's nothing to fear. I done gave you my soul, I got nothing to lose. I'm out on my block, I ain't scared of no block, but I'm strapped with that Bible. Shoot me if you want, you gon' make me a martyr. If not, I'ma rap till I see a revival You keep all your fame and your followers rip records Don't do this for mentions We do it for Jesus He said it's free and now you can find me in the trenches I'ma be brave and keep on seeking a way to get through to the youth Embrace up a generation of soldiers ready to stand on the truth Nick, 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 gracious Boy, I ride for the Lord If you not doing it for Jesus, what you doing it for? If you looking for me, you can catch me in the trenches Going 5150 Cause I'm always on the mission Turn up, turn up He loves you no matter who you are or what you've done. Pick up your cross and follow the king. I love you. Yeah. Jesus loves you. He showed this brother and everything, and, and when you ain't gotta speak it, you know we speak it now, but it shows and people see and they see your walk, and that's what that's what the whole mission is. It don't even be like me, be more like him, be better than me. You know, follow him hard. Yeah. You know, I'm just trying to lead people to let them know that no matter what you're going through, what's going on in your life, no matter what you're doing, I'm not here to judge nobody because I've done it all, seen it all. But you know, he the way. So.